join us on Patreon, and become part of our journey to uncover history's untold stories. Your support helps us create in-depth content, bring hidden narratives to life, and keep history alive for everyone. Dr. Patricia Bath's life began not with privilege or open doors, but with curiosity, discipline, and a quiet defiance of the limits the world tried to place around her. Long before she would restore sight to people who had been blind for decades, long before her name would be etched into the history of medicine and innovation, she was a child in Harlem staring at the world with wonder, asking questions no one around her seemed prepared to answer. That sense of wonder never left her. It became the engine of a career that changed modern ophthalmology and gave vision back to thousands across the globe. Her story is not only about medical genius, but about persistence in the face of exclusion, about seeing possibility where others saw barriers, and about refusing to accept that blindness, whether physical or societal, was inevitable. Patricia Arabath was born on November 4, 1942, in Harlem, New York City, at a time when America was deeply segregated by race, class, and opportunity. Her father, Rupert Bath, was the first black motorman for the New York City subway system a man who believed deeply in education, precision, and self-respect. He exposed Patricia to science and mathematics early, teaching her how to work with numbers and encouraging her interest in mechanics and engineering. Her mother, Gladys Bath, worked as a domestic worker but saved diligently so that her daughter could attend a private school. She also introduced Patricia to literature, culture, and the belief that intellectual excellence was not limited by race or gender. In a neighborhood often stereotyped as deprived, Patricia Bath grew up surrounded by encouragement to explore, question, and excel. Her academic promise revealed itself early. As a teenager, Bath participated in a National Science Foundation-sponsored program at Yeshiva University, where she conducted cancer research. At just 16 years old, she co-authored a scientific paper that explored the relationship between cancer cells and nutrition an extraordinary achievement for someone so young. This early exposure to research did more than polish her resume. It convinced her that science could be a tool for social good, a way to directly improve human lives. Even then, she was not simply interested in discovery for its own sake, but in how knowledge could be used to heal. Bath went on to attend Hunter College in New York, where she earned a degree in chemistry. At Hunter, she was one of the few black women pursuing a hard science degree, and she excelled academically despite being underestimated and occasionally isolated. From there, she entered Howard University College of Medicine, one of the most important historically black medical schools in the United States. Howard was a crucible for black intellectual and professional life, and it was there that Bath began to understand how deeply racial inequality was woven into healthcare itself. She saw firsthand how black patients often receive inferior care, were diagnosed later, or were excluded from advanced treatments available to wealthier and wider populations. After earning her medical degree in 1968, Patricia Bath completed an internship at Harlem Hospital Center. Harlem Hospital served predominantly black and low-income patients, and the contrast between the conditions there and those in better-funded hospitals was stark. Bath noticed something that troubled her deeply. Blindness rates among patients at Harlem Hospital were dramatically higher than among patients at nearby private hospitals. This was not because of biological differences, but because of unequal access to preventive eye care, early diagnosis, and advanced surgical treatment. Cataracts, glaucoma, and other eye diseases were allowed to progress untreated until vision was permanently lost. These observations led Bath to articulate what would become one of her most important intellectual contributions, the concept of community ophthalmology. She believed that eye care should not be confined to elite medical centers but brought directly into underserved communities. Vision screenings, early interventions, and education could prevent blindness before it began. In the early 1970s, she helped establish an ophthalmology residency program at Harlem Hospital becoming its first female head. She also launched outreach programs that provided free eye screenings and care to thousands of residents. This approach was revolutionary at the time, challenging the assumption that advanced medical care was only for those who could afford it. Despite her achievements, Bath encountered relentless discrimination. 
As a black woman in medicine, she faced barriers that her white male colleagues rarely noticed. She was excluded from professional networks, denied resources, and often treated as an outsider in her own field. In 1973, when she joined the faculty at the University of California, Los Angeles, she became the first black woman surgeon at the UCLA Medical Center and later the first woman to chair an ophthalmology residency program in the United States. These milestones were historic, but they did not shield her from sexism and racism. She was paid less than male colleagues, given less laboratory space, and frequently had to fight for recognition of her work. It was during this period that Bath began developing the invention that would define her legacy. Cataracts are a leading cause of blindness worldwide, caused by the clouding of the eye's natural lens. Traditional cataract surgery involved manual techniques that were not always precise and could be risky, particularly in advanced cases. Bath envisioned a more accurate, less invasive method that could restore sight even to patients who had been blind for years. Her solution was the Lazerfico probe, a device that used laser technology to precisely break apart cataracts and remove them from the eye. The procedure, known as laser phacoemulsification, allowed surgeons to operate with unprecedented accuracy, reducing damage to surrounding tissue and improving recovery times. Most importantly, it made cataract surgery more effective in severe cases, expanding the range of patients who could benefit. Developing this technology was not easy. Bath faced skepticism from colleagues who doubted both the feasibility of her ideas and her authority as a black woman innovator. Funding was difficult to secure, and institutional support was inconsistent. At one point, a fire destroyed her laboratory, sending her research back significantly. Yet she persisted, continuing her work in borrowed lab space and refining her invention over years of experimentation. In 1988, Patricia Bath became the first black woman physician to receive a medical patent when the United States Patent and Trademark Office granted her patent for the Lazerfico probe. This achievement placed her in a rare category not only among women and African Americans, but among physicians worldwide. The patent was more than a personal victory. It represented a shift in who was recognized as an innovator in medical technology. Bath would go on to receive additional patents related to ophthalmic surgery, further cementing her status as a pioneer. The impact of her invention was global. Bath worked extensively in Europe, particularly in France, where she continued refining laser cataract techniques. She also traveled to developing countries, performing surgeries and training local physicians. In many cases, she restored sight to patients who had been blind for 20 or 30 years, people who had been written off as permanently disabled. For these individuals, regaining vision meant reclaiming independence, employment, and dignity. Bath's work intersected with broader struggles for health equity. She understood that technology alone could not solve the problem of preventable blindness. Access and education were equally important. Through the American Institute for the Prevention of Blindness, which she co-founded in 1976, she advocated for the recognition of eyesight as a basic human right. The organization promoted preventive care, research, and policy changes aimed at reducing blindness worldwide, especially in underserved populations. Her career unfolded against the backdrop of major social change. The civil rights movement, the women's liberation movement, and advances in medical technology all shaped the environment in which she worked. Yet she often found herself fighting battles on multiple fronts simultaneously, challenging racism, sexism, and professional inertia. Rather than becoming embittered, Bath remained focused on her mission. She spoke openly about discrimination, believing that silence only allowed injustice to persist, but she refused to let it define her. In later years, Patricia Bath received numerous honors recognizing her contributions. She was inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame, a rare honor for a physician and a powerful acknowledgement of her role as a technological innovator. Universities and medical institutions celebrated her as a trailblazer, and her story began to reach wider audiences as an example of black excellence in science and medicine. Yet she remained modest about her achievements, often emphasizing the collective nature of progress and the importance of mentoring the next generation. 
Bath was deeply committed to education and mentorship. She believed that representation mattered, that young people needed to see scientists and surgeons who looked like them to believe such careers were possible. Throughout her life, she encouraged students, particularly women and minorities, to pursue careers in science and medicine, reminding them that obstacles were real but not insurmountable. Her own life served as proof. Dr. Patricia Bath passed away on May 30, 2019, but her legacy continues to shape the world. Millions of cataract surgeries performed today build upon the principles she helped establish. The idea that advanced medical care should be accessible to all, regardless of race or income, remains central to public health efforts worldwide. Her concept of community ophthalmology has influenced outreach programs and preventive care initiatives far beyond eye medicine. Perhaps the most profound aspect of Bath's legacy is symbolic as much as it is practical. She challenged deeply ingrained assumptions about who could be a surgeon, an inventor, a scientist. She demonstrated that brilliance could emerge from Harlem, that a black woman could reshape a field dominated by white men, and that compassion and innovation were not opposing forces but complementary ones. In restoring sight to the blind, she also illuminated the moral blindness of systems that deny care and opportunity. Her life reminds us that progress is often driven by those who refuse to accept the world as it is. Patricia Bath looked at blindness not as an unavoidable fate, but as a problem to be solved. She looked at inequality not as a given, but as an injustice to be confronted. Through intellect, resilience, and an unwavering belief in the value of human vision, she changed countless lives and expanded the boundaries of what medicine could achieve. Her story endures as a testament to the power of seeing clearly, both with the eyes and with the mind.